Pre-grading clay. The main goal when it comes to pre-grading is to end up with the proper quantity of material. If you're working in the city of Edmonton or surrounding area, the next step will be to stabilize that material. When you add cement powder and water, the quantity of the clay will increase slightly. If the quantity of material ends up being too much, when you trim the street to grade, you will have to haul valuable stabilized material away. If the quantity is too little, you will end up adding more valuable gravel to the street. This is a perfect example of how one step leads to the next step. Ending up with a proper quantity is a bit of a guessing game. There is so many variables. How much cement powder will they use? Fine particle clay seems to expand more than silt. If the material is very dry, the stabilizing crew will add more water. If the material is wet and muddy, they may stabilize with no water at all to achieve the optimum moisture. For me, this quantity guesstimation is usually a joint decision between the grading crew, the foreman, and the superintendent. Here are a couple tips that may help you achieve this step. When the pre-roll or pre-axle test is done and you get surprised with the quantity of cement powder you thought they were going to use, you can tweak the quantity of clay just slightly. That is, haul a few loads off or add a few loads. The presentation is not so important on this step. If it doesn't look pretty, it's okay. If one station is two centimeters low, the next station is two centimeters high, that's fine. It will average out in the end. If you manage to get this quantity perfect, you are probably just got lucky. In the upcoming video, I will focus on the outside perimeter and some safety tips. In later videos, I will get more into the measuring part of it. I am doing a voiceover on some footage with the camera mounted on the side of the grater. The clay here is nice and dry. They will stabilize with 10 or 15 kilograms per square meter. Therefore, we will probably pre-grade one or two centimeters below finished grade. I hope you enjoy the upcoming video. Okay, here we are pre-grading for a roll face and straight face curb. There's no mono going here, it's just curb. And uh, I wanted to talk about uh, how important this step is. It is step number one. And uh, it is an important one. It has to be done properly. And uh, here they've drawn an offset line. You can see where the hub is there. And uh, the great person has drawn an offset line. So that I'm, I'm looking for that pink line right there. And uh, eventually I'll make one more pass on that and completely take that line out. And uh, now here, as we're pre-grading, uh, we've got a water valve. And you have to be extremely careful with this when you're pre-grading, especially because uh, if you hit that water valve hard enough, you're going to break it. And if you break it, there's somebody's digging down 10 feet to fix it. It's a long ways down to the bottom to repair those. It's an expensive repair and uh, it's not a good thing to do. So when you see a water valve out there, you better make sure that you know how deep it is so you can stay away from those valves. 
Another thing I was going to mention is uh, it's nice to have an edge along there. You know, they refer to that as backing. So you can see where my blade is there right now. And this time I'm completely taking out the pink line. And so it should be nice and straight and it should be out there far enough now. But it's nice to have that that edge, a little bank, a little embankment there that's, uh, you know, 20 or 30 centimeters high is just, just perfect. And uh, because what it does is it retains the gravel. Like once this street is stabilized, the next step is to stabilize it. And once it's stabilized, that little embankment right there at the ed edge of my blade will uh, will retain the gravel. The gravel can go up against it. So it's a good thing to have there. And, you know, we, we refer to that as backing. And if it isn't there, sometimes I'll even take the time to create it. I'll put material out there, a wheel packet, and uh, I'll create backing so that the gravel doesn't keep uh, sloughing away. If there's no backing there, when you're trying to pack that edge of that gravel, it has a tendency to keep uh, uh, going away on you. So it's nice. It's, it's just perfect to have a 20 or 30 centimeter little uh, edge on your, on your uh, right at your line there. It just works out good. Here's another, I'm talking about water valve again. Another water valve. Here I'm going to lift the lid and actually show you guys uh, there's the valve. It's got a plate on it. And uh, it's good to keep, a, keep a, a, a mental note of where all these are on the job. There it is. Now this one here I'll probably cover it up with dirt and it'll be just fine because it looks like it's probably deep enough. But uh, if you hit those, it's not good you break them and it's a big it's a big fix when you break them here I am on this edge again you see I don't take the line completely uh, on the first pass I usually uh, don't erase the pink line or the paint line I don't erase it so that I want to keep it visible for the next pass you see and these stakes that you see me running over there they're just they're just laugh that the underground company was using when they were attempting to grade this street. So I'll knock that stake out. That's just, uh, that's not our stakes. It's the, it's the, it's the underground company which was using those. So here we are again, this is just curb. This isn't mono, it's just a uh, curb. I believe a straight face curb going here. And uh, I'll make one pass, the first pass here. Like I just went over a CB there, but that's okay. And uh, I'll back up and make at least one more pass to, to go right to that line and try to make it nice and straight. And uh, you can even, uh, you know, take a, take a look down it and eye down it and to make sure it's straight. Because from, from the seat of the grader, it's actually quite hard to tell if it's perfectly straight from, from sitting in the seat of the grader. But if you back up and line up on it and look, look down at like a fence line, uh, then you can see where it protrudes out and you can remedy that issue. You can also get the grade person to do that. Ask them, ask them to look down that line and ask them to put a paint mark wherever it's protruding out so that you can make sure to get it nice and straight. Well, there's the old high point stakes. You gotta remember to mark that high point. Uh, here we're we're uh, doing we're doing these berms. It's uh, rolled mono berms. But one thing I wanted to talk about is a mistake that's made a lot. This edge, right along the edge, it's very important to get that straight and to measure it frequently. I'm gonna put a paint line out there and follow that paint line because if you don't, 
and you get the odd the odd area protruding out like this right here I want to show you this because here's an area when the gamaku was trimming here an hour ago it ran into clay on the edge of this berm and it managed to get through it without throwing it around sometimes it's sometimes it throws the gamaku around and uh, he's got to pull out you got to do some got to get rid of it and set back in again there it's a real pain that on this particular spot he was able to power through it and then we had to get shovels or the laborers had to get shovels and shovel this clay off and it was just protruding out a little bit like it was only protruding out uh, uh, you know maybe uh, uh, 50 centimeters or so that's all it was but it's enough to cause havoc it happened here and it happened in a different location up up uh, on the other on the other side it hit clay again luckily it was a little bit loose and, and the gamaco was able to uh, trim without uh, without pulling out but it's a it happens a lot you have to be really careful with this and and uh, the time to remedy that is not when the gravel is on the job. The time to remedy this issue is right when you're pre-grading. It's the very beginning step of the job. It is step number one. That was not done properly. I just wanted to uh, throw that last clip in there to, to emphasize how important it is to do this step properly. To do every step properly, actually. And uh, how if you don't, you'll pay for it somewhere down the line, I guarantee it. It might be a few days later, but you're going to pay the price if you don't do it properly. Now here, I'm just uh, going out to the line. I mean, now this time I'm taking the pink line out and uh, hopefully it'll be nice and straight, that line. Now, I don't have any numbers written on the ground. Quite normally, I'll ask the grade person, or they'll do it automatically, to uh, use, take the paint gun and they'll measure and uh, write a number on the dirt, write a number right on the dirt, just in front of that lath, and I'll, then I can guesstimate it, you know, estimate how deep to cut but in this particular spot there's no number on the ground but uh, there will be later well, they'll measure down and we'll put grading dots you see we'll put a we'll put a, a dot on the ground eventually when it gets down to grade and there'll be a dot on the ground and that dot is what we'll use to put the boning rod on or we'll measure to actually measure up the street to pre-grade it we'll measure off that dot and we'll talk, I'll talk more about that in a later video. To create these videos, I am using footage that I shot on the job site last summer. If you find these videos helpful or interesting, please like and subscribe. If you have some input, please leave a comment below.